We often mentioned in our previous videos that the Boring Company would accidentally complement SpaceX to dig underground tunnels on the Moon and on Mars. But in this episode, we are going to analyze this proposition more thoroughly, together with William from the Boring Revolution channel. But why exactly would boring machines be so perfect on the Moon and Mars? This will be really exciting, so stay tuned. The people have spoken and the will of the people shall be granted. So what can the Boring Company actually do for us on the Moon and on Mars? A highly fascinating topic because we think that there is actually a lot which this cool company will do on our future off-world colonies. We know that the Boring Company was founded back in December 2016 as a subsidiary of SpaceX because Elon was famously annoyed by the notorious LA traffic. Since 2018, it is a fully independent company. So this company is only a few years old and has already so much going on, it's crazy. For example, we know the test tunnel they have in Los Angeles, connecting the SpaceX headquarters to Hawthorne Boulevard, the tunnel being 3.2 kilometers or 2 miles long. You know that the Boring Company is busy working on the Las Vegas Loop system, which will open next year connecting the Las Vegas Convention Center exhibit halls to each other, but soon also to the resort's world. And there are plans to expand the Las Vegas Loop to the entire strip, the airport, and maybe even someday to Los Angeles. As for upcoming projects, there is the proposed Baltimore to Washington Loop, possibly even a New York, Philly, Baltimore, DC Hyperloop, then the Chicago Loop, which would connect downtown Chicago to the airport. Also a new project at Ontario Airport in LA, and also a possible loop for San Jose. So the Boring Company has a lot going on and we think it will be very busy in the next years. However, we know that Elon is always thinking at least three steps ahead. And indeed, already back in 2017, during a conference on the topic of the International Space Station, Elon said that the Boring Company tunnels could also be used on Mars. He said, quote, I do think getting good at digging tunnels could be really helpful for Mars. You can build a tremendous amount underground with the right boring technology on Mars. So I do think there's some overlap in that technology development arena. For sure, there's going to be a lot of ice mining on Mars and mining in general to get raw materials. These are already some very precise and interesting statements for a company that was supposedly founded to alleviate traffic. All of Elon's companies will have tremendous synergies for our future settlements on the Moon and on Mars. Tesla, of course, is obvious with batteries, Moon and Mars rover Cybertrucks, and battery storage infrastructure. But also Neuralink for real-life looking holodeck simulations on the colonies should you get bored with optical feed directly into your brain. However, the Boring Company will be really essential because the most important technology for allowing us to permanently live on other worlds will be in situ resource utilization. This means utilizing resources found directly on the Moon or Mars in order to use them for life support or to build stuff. Without this important step, we can never have cities on other moons or planets. Elon hinted that ice mining will be crucial but also raw materials. Mars, for example, is very rich with underground ice. There are huge water ice deposits, as this map shows, in the northern and southern latitude regions. But as these deposits are underground, we need to dig below ground to get there. Also, Mars has lots of valuable minerals and ore deposits near the large volcanoes, such as copper, chromium, iron and nickel, which are of course perfect for building the future Mars bases in situ. Other underground deposits include niobium, a metal used in producing superconductors and special steels, lanthanum and neodymium, and europium for television monitors and energy-efficient LED lights. So there's really a lot of excellent metals present on Mars for building the Mars bases. How exactly then could we use the boring machines on Mars? Well. Our friend William from the awesome YouTube channel, A Boring Revolution, 
can help us to answer that question. But before that, please consider to subscribe to our YouTube channel because it's completely free and you can watch on the topic for our next Friday's space video. Your support means a lot to us. So yeah, William is a real expert on boring machines and he's doing regular, very detailed updates on the boring company on his cool channel. Please check out his channel and subscribe. So without further ado, Will, please proceed. Ah yes, the boring company and Mars. Although initially not critical to the survival of settlers on Mars, during the early years, tunnel boring machines or TBMs will easily become some of the most important pieces of equipment situated on Mars, and over time, their activities will encompass the whole planet. But how do our prospectors come to achieve this challenge? Let me elaborate. TBMs, as complex as they first may appear, complete relatively simple tasks when it comes to boring a tunnel. Thus, every major component of the machine is critical to either the excavation process or the construction process. On Mars, this will be no different. However, for the foreseeable future, Mars will likely lack the manufacturing capacity necessary to build those core components. Not to worry. Thanks to SpaceX and its revolutionary Starship rocket, the capability exists to move some 100 tons of cargo per Starship to the Red Planet, more than enough capacity to accommodate the majority of components our settlers require to begin assembling our first tunnel boring machine. These include the screw conveyor, segment erector, hydraulic cylinders, asynchronous motors, cutter discs, and many other crucial components, all of which would be manufactured by SpaceX's partner, the Boring Company, in a joint venture, allowing the Boring Company to build tools specifically tailored to the unique conditions on Mars. Once dispatched from Earth, components would be assembled on Mars using existing equipment made available during the base's construction, such as modified jib cranes and forklifts. Prior to any TBM arriving, the settlement would require a foundry, and this would be constructed well in advance to supply the steel necessary for the TBM shield, cutter head, muck trucks, and tunnel linings. Excellent. Now, we have a fully functioning TBM ready to enrich the lives of all our settlers one way or another. But where will our tunnel start? And most importantly, where will it go? Well, fortunately for us, the Mars base that SpaceX constructed prior to our arrival is impeccably located adjacent to an enormous lava tube some 200 meters in diameter. Once compartmentalized and airtight, this lava tube becomes a ready-made launch pit with room to spur, ideal for living quarters, various fabrication yards, and a vital tipping ground for spoil, likely many millions of tons. In the formation years, with resources extremely limited, the survival of the base will inevitably put our TBM to work in a mining-only capacity. Luckily, the Martian ground is abundant with useful elements such as copper, chromium, iron, nickel, and many others. This then allows for settlers to arrive en masse from Earth and contribute to the creation of brand new mining settlements all across Mars's many diverse regions. But most importantly, how do we make this viable? We use proof rock. Automated construction systems inside proof rock allow for continuous mining and the rapid construction of many miles of tunnel. Thanks to continuous construction and thrusting, our fully automated TBM can rapidly cut through the Martian strata at a rate of 17 meters per hour. Its custom cutter head and teeth ripping apart the rock with ease as it rotates, making light work of the Martian geology. After a few months, our miners will reach their chosen destination and Proof Rock will begin the rewarding process of extracting ore from the ground around it. Amazing. And as this dynamic mining settlement thrives, it will become more expansive with the rapid construction of side tunnels, each of them many, many miles in length. But what for the future? With ever expansion to the east and to the west comes problems. Accessibility to many a place will likely be time consuming and thus wasteful in the early years, with many settlers isolated 
and confined to set areas. Luckily, this is not forever, as ultra-straight tunnel systems will be bored parallel to our mining routes for the sole purpose of transporting passengers and finished goods across this vast planet. Speeds of over 800 kilometers per hour will be possible thanks to the Hyperloop and its linear electric motors. Vacuum pumps in this instant will not be required as conditions inside the tunnel will identically match the thin Martian atmosphere, allowing effortless acceleration. For convenience, existing Hyperloop pods from Earth can be rapidly transported to Mars, allowing rapid construction. Fascinating. And in no time, Hyperloop passenger stations and loading docks will appear on every corner of the planet. All in all, the prospects for Mars and all its inhabitants will no doubt be prosperous thanks to the Boring Company technology that allows uber-fast, cost-effective tunnels to be built effortlessly. Back to you in the studio, Sebastian and Jishuan. That was an extremely detailed and excellent explanation. Thanks a lot, Will. So we saw that the boring machines could be super useful to dig underground tunnels to harvest water ice and metal ores. And getting the boring machines to Mars won't be a huge problem, by the way. The newest boring machine called Proofrock has a diameter of 8 meters and weighs about 1200 metric tons. Now, while the diameter is perfect for Starship, fitting nicely into the 8.5 meter diameter payload area, the weight is of course a bit brutal, since the payload capacity of Starship to Mars will be around 100 metric tons. Similar for the Moon, by the way. Therefore, we would need to disassemble the boring machines into smaller chunks, with 12 cargo starships being able to deliver one boring machine, and then reassemble it on Mars. Sounds like a lot of work, but we should remember that Elon has the goal to build a thousand starships, so yeah. 12 starships per TBM should therefore work. Later on, of course, the TBMs will be built directly on the Moon or Mars using ISRU and 3D printing. But why underground in the first place? Of course, mining water ice and mineral ores is extremely important, but there is another reason why underground might be excellent on the Moon and Mars. Solar and cosmic radiation. The average annual radiation dosage on Mars on the surface is about 240 to 300 millisieverts per year, so about 40 to 50 times more than on Earth. On the Moon it's even more due to the lack of atmosphere, with a maximum of 400 millisieverts per year. This is quite comparable to long duration stays on the ISS. But of course, completely eliminating radiation would be nice, right? Well, habitats like Marsha from AI Space Factory, or the 3D printed regolith domes as suggested by Hessel are also excellent. Especially the regolith domes, as they would reduce radiation dosages quite a lot. Having underground bases would completely eliminate the radiation problem altogether. And don't forget that meteorites won't pose any problems anymore below ground. Underground lava tubes which are gargantuan on the Moon and Mars. See this video here where we talked about that. Would be an excellent starting point for bases, and the boring machines could dig tunnels from there, as William explained, to the ore and water ice sites. The boring company could also dig tunnels to connect to other underground bases. Or the boring machines could also dig tunnels to connect overground bases like this one here, to other overground bases, while having the comfort of traveling at high speeds underground, nicely protected. At some point in the future, we could connect entire Mars cities with underground hyperloops. An underground Martian hyperloop network, all dug with TBMs. Same of course for the Moon. Another awesome use would be to dig circular tunnels where the previously mentioned maglev trains could be utilized as circular rotating bases in order to combat the detrimental effects of low gravity onto the human body. Now, this is a cool idea by our friend Dr. Joseph Parker, about which he talked in this presentation here, link in the description. Oh, and he also started a space channel, the Terran Space Academy, awesome name by the way, 
we highly recommend you to check it out and to subscribe since his videos go really in depth into some technology topics and he explains some complicated technical concepts in a very detailed yet understandable way. So the timeline for TBMs on the Moon and on Mars would be something like this. First, establish overground or underground or mixed overground and underground bases. Then dig tunnels from there to water ice and metal ore deposits for ISRU. Then dig the first tunnels connecting a base to another base. Then dig a larger network connecting multiple bases to each other. At some point build the underground rotating habitats. Then finally build a hyperloop network connecting the growing bases or cities to each other that are lying far apart. So as you see, there are really a lot of uses for the boring company machines on the Moon and on Mars. And even though it might take some effort to bring the first boring machines there, it will be worth it, as they would help us to make our future off-world colonies self-sustaining, help us to overcome the detrimental low gravity effects onto the human body, shield us from harmful radiation, and even connect all our future bases and cities to each other via a giant ultra-fast transportation network. And if you think boring machines on the Moon and Mars nice but I'm more interested in Venus, then you can watch this video here. So thanks a lot for watching the JI Space Report and don't forget to watch for next week's topic. So then I would say on to the future. Also jetzt ohne Schmarrn geht's jetzt echt mal los oder wie? Then it's time to check everything. Why exactly would boring machines be so